I've been watching videos on lighting for like the past two days on YouTube. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just trying to teach myself about like lighting and shit. Because I really want to do this vlog. <clears throat> like, I, I seriously want to go to Jamaica for a month. For like a month at a time. Yeah. I had this, this, uh, this idea of going to uh, Malaga for a month. Where? Malaga, I believe it's in Spain. It's where Pablo, it's Pablo Picasso's hometown. Really? I heard it's mad cheap to be out there. So I was like, okay, a dollar a day for real? Okay. <laughs> Let Don't me go out there. Is it, is it? <laughs> No, that's Portugal. I was thinking Spain had decriminalized the uh, drugs, but no. oh man, Spain. I went to Rota en route to uh, Afghanistan. Uh, my second deployment. Spain is gorgeous. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet. See, that's why I want to go there. It's gorgeous. Every, honestly, everywhere that I went overseas was absolutely beautiful um spain was nice uh doha was nice um kuwait was nice even kyrgyzstan with the mountains i mean it was beautiful afghanistan would be a, a beautiful place to visit if it wasn't such a fucked up ass country but um i mean everything everywhere over there was just just scenic you know? yeah you were in the army, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long were you in? Four and a half years. That seems like a long time, doesn't it? Like being in military years, that's like, that's about eight. That's, that's, that's like that's at least eight. That's like yeah, eight or nine yeah. regular <laughs> civilian years. Yeah. Um. I I was in a hard landing in Afghanistan. My first deployment. Uh, I've gotten mortared. I've gotten hit by a Humvee. Um, I I went through a lot dealing with that That's stupid right, you had, shit. Yeah. So did you like it? No, you didn't like it. You didn't like being in. Um, I I missed like the structure, like kind of how like you know people you knew that like a large majority of the time the people that you go to work with they're coming there to like do to actually do their job that's that's yeah. what i miss the most because like dealing with people and whether it's like them working a normal job or um you know dealing with people who own their own business and work their own way um i think that we have like this certain level of tact and professionalism that we think is normal that a lot of people don't think is normal or like a lot of people haven't thought of so in in transitioning back um that's been like one of the biggest things is like um like missing that that structure but like you know knowing that i gotta like be patient when it comes to like normal people out here that's really the only thing I miss about the military. The rest of it, that shit sucked. I mean, I was, I miss flying every day or, you know, every other day or whatever. That's right, you were, you, what did you do? What did um, you do? I was a 15 Sierra. I was a Kiowa mechanic. It was like a small Bell 407 mechanic and it had like this huge ball on it. But I would always be flying with like the Ch Ch the Chinook guys, the Blackhawk guys, because I would go from base to base, uh, delivering parts or like doing whatever. I'd go on down there craft recovery missions where, uh, you know, aircraft got shot down or uh, like in my situation, it hit a tree. So we got to go out there and like, you know, deal with that situation until they figure out whether they want us to take certain parts away or if they want us to blow the shit up so um i miss like the the constant workload yeah there was always something there was always something to do you yeah. were always going somewhere yeah you didn't have to yeah you didn't have to really think too much um about what your next move is gonna be. You were usually told like what to do next, um, yeah. unless you were doing something like choosing a new duty station or like you wanted to lap move or something. You didn't. 
Especially f- for me being an aircraft mechanic, I definitely knew what I was going to be doing next. I forgot yeah. you said you were like in, in command, right? Like you were. Yeah, I was at the command element at the MEF level. Right. So, you know, I definitely was the lowest ranking Marine for a long, for, for my entire enlistment around like nothing but like shiny. Mm-hmm. Brass. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely, you know, that made me very um, complacent um, in certain ways because it's, it's a different, it's a different environment working at the command level than it would be at a platoon level mm-hmm. or even um, group level. And I imagine the Marine Corps and the Navy got to be a completely different ball game than what the fuck I went through in the Army. Like, I I feel like you, you guys probably had, like, a higher standard of everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did, but we did. I was a, you know, I think I told you this, but last time we spoke, I was like a, I was a huge turd while I was in. Um, I was kind of shiny when I wanted to be, when I needed, when I had to be. But for the most part, I was mostly a turd. Um, yeah, I was a shit bag too. Yeah, <laughs> a shit bag. Yeah. Yeah, man. I just, I was, I, I didn't. I just wanted to be gone. And then me being at the meth level didn't help that at all. Um, I, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had two gunnies there who actually had an interest in my my development as a young marine. Other than that, you know, and they, but they weren't even in charge of me right um really so but then working at that level there's only it's not it's just different it's just it was different it's different being at that at, at such a uh that at being that at that meth level like type shit like that that's one regret that i have is um not switching units like not going somewhere else mm-hmm. I probably would have did eight years, I think, if I um, was at another level. But who knows? I could say that, but probably not because I liked it, but I didn't. You know. What exactly did that entail? Like, what 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 was your job description? I was um, a maintenance manager. Maintenance, actually, no, I was a maintenance management clerk, right? But my, you know, my. Uh, my MOS was 0411, right? Oh, that was the code, whatever. Um, basically, uh, overseeing the maintenance and accountability of equipment. Okay. That was basically it. Okay. Yeah. I feel like from being in this environment even the last time when the walls were a little bit more bare yeah. i feel like using your hands and like seeing your work is something that's very essential to you yeah i feel like yeah you know yeah i don't feel like you ever could have thrived in that, <laughs> in that environment ever <laughs> that's so true that's true Ever. That's true. I wouldn't. I would not have. I wasn't because I was always thinking. The reason why I was so complacent, it wasn't because I didn't appreciate the position. I was just always thinking about doing something else. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to do something else, and so it prevented. It, you know, I didn't have that awareness. One of myself, and two of the fact that I'm gonna have to do four years regardless. Yeah. <laughs> there's you. There's no. There's no getting out of it. So do like take advantage of the four years you have and um you know get the experience and i did still get the experience you know because i was i was overseas and i went to korea but it wasn't i don't know like- i feel like i could have done so much better and i know that's just who i was and i needed to go th- um you know I, you know i definitely feel like your potential was limited yeah you know but you know the thing is my potential was limited i don't think Necessarily because of the environment, but because of my personality at the time. Oh, you think it was you? I think it was me, man. I'm not gonna lie. I think, granted, my per- my potential would have been limited regardless because of what the structure of the system was. Because mm-hmm. of what it was. You know, it's the fucking military and I'm a creative. Come on. Like, 
Yeah, it doesn't work. It does not work, right. But as far as like my potential within the institution or just as a person, as the, the growth, the, the character development. Mm -hmm. I... But then again, I could say that my character, my level of character development now is due to the fact that I was even doing that shit and I have it to reflect on, but I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, I still feel like, even though you feel like it was you, I still feel like your environment has an effect on you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like your environment has That's true. an influence on how you're thinking. You That's know, true. when you, when you mm -hmm. take yourself out of negative situations, you tend to think more positively. So... If you were having a negative attitude about it back then, I feel like probably it was because you were probably around some negative motherfuckers. You know, yeah, and I, and that goes back to earlier when I said I wish I chose a different unit, you know, yeah. and, and probably got around some different um, people. How do you feel like... Um, Because I'm sure, especially being in Korea, you know, being in situations, you know, you can't see your family, you know, you're dealing with people that you really probably don't even want to work with at all. Um, what do you think you took from that long term? Because I know from my experience, like, I've gotten kind of closed off and uh, introverted simply because like like I'm a Gemini and I feel people's energy mm -hmm. and like it kind of made me want to like stay away from folks because like I can see how their energy kind of like rubs off on me mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so and it, I know when I was in Afghanistan especially like it wasn't like I could just go away it was not yeah. like I could just like take leave or like go somewhere else how you feel like that affected your mental health? Being in like in that box. Definitely, when I was in Korea, that was a, a really weird time because again, I was out there as a lance corporal. Mm -hmm. That's E three, right? Mm -hmm. And there was absolutely no reason for me to be there. You know, it was a it was an exercise. Um, and I get it; it's a, it's an exercise. You know, cool. It was cold as fuck. <laughs> cold as shit, and we was on the we was at the, on the port, so it was hella. It was more colder than it should have been. Anyway, yeah. it was just cold as shit. Cause that the sea breeze, man, that shit ain't yeah. no joke. <laughs> the tent wasn't stopping shit. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it was cold as hell, and um, oh, one of my friends passed away. Yeah, one of my friends passed away. I'm sorry, sir. It's because I smoked. Smoking makes me emotional. Okay. Anyway. I'm sorry, Sai. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you sound like me on the, on the first episode. That's how I was with my mom. Um, no, you didn't do anything. Um... I'm telling you it's because I'm hot and also it's been a little emotional today like I'll turn up. So. You need a tissue? No, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. We're gonna cut all that out. Alright. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> Everything else that I was doing that I'm dealing with internally is what's informing me, reflecting on that moment, causing that to be so heavy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I've definitely moved past the situation, but like, so one of my friends, he passed and it, it hurts because me and him fell out. Oh. And it was kind of one of those things where we were hanging out every day to not hanging out at all. And we were, you know, we were in Japan. We met while we were doing um, some guard duty bullshit. <laughs> and, you know, he left. I kind of, I, I saw him as he left and I was just like, you know, whatever. You don't think about that type of shit in that moment. Like, oh, I'm never going to see this guy again. And then he, you know, we kind of, he would, he commented on it. He was like, yeah, we don't even talk no more, man. And I was like, yeah, okay. 
You know, some shit went down. We had a fallout, you know, whatever. Anyway, then I, I go to Korea and, you know, I'm dealing with that environment. One, what I described, me being bored out my motherfucking mind, waiting for, hurrying up to wait for not a goddamn thing. I'm dealing with my girlfriend at the time. You know, and it, we're young as shit, so you know we're dumb as hell. Uh -huh. For no damn reason. Just, and dramatic. Everything was trauma, right? <laughs> so there's the stress of that. We ended up breaking up. I was dealing with that, and then I got the news that he passed. And then, because of what had went down between us, my friends were telling me about it, but they weren't saying good things. And that kind of hurt as well. Yeah. And. Because it's like you so, knew him. And they didn't yeah. know him like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, Korea was definitely a time that was. And then I was getting in trouble a lot out there. I remember one time some, some, uh, what's this? So, uh, I'm not going to say it because it's kind of boot tenant. Some boot tenant, right? Whatever, I don't care. Um, it was, she had a problem with me for some reason. And I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck because you, I understood you were an officer, but I still, okay. And she would complain about me all the time to like my master guys and my master guys equally did not give a fuck. <laughs> so he would just kind of like, but he, it was just constant, like every day. And I'm like, lady, I'm bored. So of course I'm not going to be. Come on, man. Uh, if there's what? nothing to do, of course people gonna get into trouble. So uh, of course I'm gonna dwell and on on the bullshit, the other stuff, the other personal shit I got going on because there's no work to fucking do, and yeah. so that's gonna cause me to not come into work when I'm supposed to. Yeah. That's why would I? Why would I hurry up to be on time to just sit there and check a log? Yeah, that's true. Especially, you know, ain't nobody life on the line. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Ain't nobody dying. And look, that was my whole <laughs> mentality throughout the Marine Corps, right? I knew that this was all fuck fuck games. I knew that yeah. this was just so I never took it seriously unless somebody was actually in fucking distress or unless I had to because no one else was going to. Yeah. That's the only time I showed my true potential. Other times I was a stan I was a goddamn stanchion. So that was my entire mentality. If it's 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 not that deep. I get it. And look at what you bloomed into from that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm running a little behind now. But anyway, let's talk not about really. you. Not really. Let's talk about really. you. So, um. <laughs> yes. So you had you had a couple uh, like near death experiences, didn't you? Yeah, I've had. I've so I, if we're gonna be real honest. Uh, about my trauma. I mean, my trauma started when I was like four because my mom was like working for Fulton County Jail or whatever and she used to leave me with this dude and his girlfriend and oh. they took advantage of me when I was like four. And like my mom really mm -hmm. wasn't listening. So like I kind of just had to deal with that. That was really like my first experience like being sexually taken advantage of by two people who I didn't even fucking know. You know what I'm saying? Like... And, and then like the interaction I had with my mom where she really was just like too busy to listen you know she was trying to put food on the table she was trying to make money um, so I, I was kind of like the first what I what I kind of felt like was a near-death experience yeah you know what I'm saying cuz yeah. like I had never I had never felt like that before and like I that that kind of has like an effect on the other experiences I had later. You know what I'm saying? Like um, dealing with men in the military and knowing how fucked up these dudes are and like being able to tell who is who and like, you know, what they would do to people. So, and I, I know this kind of, this, this is kind of sounding crazy, but no. I'm gonna I'm string it together. Basically like, I mean, we had situations out there where there were female soldiers that were getting killed because they were caught up in sex trafficking rings. So I'm going out on missions 
with these dudes that I knew that I was, you know, trying to be a whistleblower about, but then, you know, what, also what? trying to avoid because I knew they might kill me. I'm, I'm going on life or death missions with dudes that are caught up in these fucked up situations. And you know them, and that probably made that shit. Even worse, because it's like, I can't trust you. Right. I can't trust you. I, 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 I've, we've been in a situation where, like, uh, we had an aircraft go down, and it was like, like right next to like this little remote village and like it was i guess it was like like whoever it was taliban hezbollah Haqqani network it was like 50 60 of motherfuckers just coming down from a hill and you can see them like through the tree lines and they eventually stopped they didn't fire they didn't do nothing because we got in front of them and the people in the village you know they had their own weapons and stuff like that and one of the dudes that I'm talking about ends up looking at one of the females in the village who's in a whole fucking burka and was like, oh, she's got a nice shape. Like, bro, we can't even, we can't talk about that right now. This is a life or death situation. Like, literally, that that was the, the mindset of some of these dudes that I was in the army with. Yeah, a lot of them be de desensitized as fuck. Like, there are a lot of women who die dealing with that shit and wait I, so, I really, so what do you mean like dealing with it so what exactly military sexual trauma uh not being able to like These really other be, women in the military mm -hmm, not being able to be like um uh coherent in the middle of a mission because they're thinking about the same things that you're thinking about when you were in korea you know what i'm saying like yeah. those those situations made my life or death situations like getting mortared and being in a a, a a hard landing in a black hawk those made my situations even more fucked up because you're getting shot at and now i'm getting shot at by folks over here but then like i don't know if you're gonna shoot me in my back too because if i speak up and say something about it i might die yeah so yeah, that was a really like mind fuck for me. Damn. Yeah. More that I think the the sexual trauma because I had a platoon sergeant who you know he got pissed off at me and I'm sitting at like uh, how your desk is right here, but um, you know there's no outlet. There's a wall like right behind the desk, so there's nowhere I could go, and he's. He's literally in my face with like his crotch in my face and then like had the audacity to put his hands on his hips like I was supposed to suck his dick or something. Like, it, I told him I would kill him. Yeah. Like, I, I got NJP for that. So, I mean, it was, it, it wasn't more so the, the physical trauma. It was more so the mental trauma that went along with it, not knowing that, you know, there's really several different ways that I could die in, in this in this situation in this shitty ass sandbox, you know. Yeah, and then also dealing with the fact that you can't really trust who's who's around you. Like, what do they know I know, and will they try to, you know, silence me because I know? And they, I, I mean, we watch people get silenced. It's like it was a lot of shit that got swept up under the rug. It's a lot of it's a lot of things that people to this day don't want to talk about. And I get it. Like I get it. There were there are people in Leavenworth. I mean there there was a situation recently. Uh there was a soldier that they took like to the river or something like that. He was a uh it was like four or five different active duty soldiers and like I guess it was a weekend they went drinking out by a river and I guess one of the soldiers that they didn't like one of they you know um, you know one of their co-workers I guess they cut his head off literally decapitated this? him this was this was in Texas like more this situation happened like over a year ago but then they started investigating more like about six Recently. six seven yeah Wow. Crazy, crazy shit like I remember, that. I remember how we used to get these, um, these PowerPoint, you know, death by PowerPoint type presentations mm -hmm. 
of how to not do weird shit as Marines, right? Um, and the opening was a video of this Marine throwing puppies off a cliff. It went pretty viral a while ago, like a long time ago. It was like an international... Everything that Marines do overseas becomes a whole fucking international incident. Yeah, I remember that. So there was them throwing um, puppies off the cliff. At some point, you got to look at the system and be like, what it is that... What is it that is causing this to happen within a system that I'm a part of and and that I contribute to. I think that's also why I feel like really, um, like uh, I'm really heartfelt towards other veterans. Like I really feel for other vets because they, people talk a lot of shit about us. Like, you know, I I get it. There's some, you know, Air Force folks who, you know, they want to complain. I haven't seen my kid in six months and you're only in Kuwait, you know? Like, well, you're on six-month deployments. Like, get over yourself. But, I mean, there are people who... I, I, don't, I don't think a, a lot of people actually realize that there are people who come from the streets who join the military mm-hmm. who are trying to run away from their trauma in the street yep. and end up running into more in the motherfucking military. Yep. You know? Um, I kind of just try to, you know, just be open to, like... Um, listening to people and their stories and shit because I don't know have y'all ever heard of Lavina Johnson so Lavina Johnson was black soldier um, I think she was like 4'11 she went to Iraq uh, 101st out of, out of Campbell same unit I was in um, they said they ruled it as a suicide but let's be honest they tried to say that this woman doused her own vagina in bleach. They said that she cut off her own fingertips. They said that she broke her own neck. They said that she broke her own nose. Um, not doused it in bleach. Oh, they, not doused it in bleach. They tried to say that she shot herself with an M16. That's not possible. At 411, you know that's not possible. That's definitely not possible. You can't reach the trigger. And then they said she set herself on fire. Ain't no motherfucking way. Ain't no way. I don't believe anybody in their right ass mind in any situation would ever do no shit like that and and have other people just be like, okay, that's fine. I uh, I, I believe that that's what happened. There's no way that you at a command level could look at that situation and be like, she did this to herself. They've covered up shit like that, even with people of their own. Uh, people love to talk about like Pat Tillman, right? You know who Pat Tillman is. No, Pat Tillman was a he was an NFL player who left the NFL to be an Army Ranger. He ended up getting killed. They said he was killed by enemy fire at first, and then it came out that he was killed by friendly fire. Then it comes out he wasn't killed by friendly fire. He was murdered sitting in, a, sitting in his truck. Because the Rangers that he was with did some other fucked up shit, and he was the whistleblower. So they killed him. He was a whole fucking NFL player. Starting linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. And they murdered this dude in a fucking truck. That's crazy. They will cover up their own shit. Yeah. It's a lot of shit that goes like, it's a lot of shit that has happened that we probably have not even fucking heard. that people ain't gonna speak on. So you gotta think about how, like all of that, your childhood traumas, your street traumas, cause there's gang members in the military. You know what I'm saying? Then you gotta deal with your family issues. Then you, then you gotta deal with your military issues. It's a lot. It's a lot. People really, and then now we living in this COVID era People got a lot of brain fog because you got a lot to process. You know, it's 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 crazy how you think about like these life or death situations that happened. You know, in the military and certain certain situations that you went through when you were younger, and you keep telling yourself as you get older it's gonna get easier, but it doesn't unless you do the work. Unless you do the work. Speaking of doing the work, you said well earlier when we was on the roof, you were talking about. Um, you know, the challenges of finding good, um, 
I guess mental health resources and that you kind that kind of made you want to become a therapist, right? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Honestly, I think that um I I deal with this shit like on a daily mm-hmm. basis. And if I can do it, I'm just some fucking weirdo from Riverdale. If I can fucking do it, you know, I believe that there's other black men out here who can actually, like, learn how to get that shit together. Because I, I see a lot of these niggas. And, like, excuse my French. But, uh... Niggas is French? No, I'm just... I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know what I mean, no, man. I know what like, you mean. <laughs> I mean, I just... I, I see I see how people really get out here and like really be on some bullshit for absolutely no fucking reason. Yeah. Like a lot of us are though and we don't even realize how that we're still in survival mode when we don't need to be. Yeah. And we're not really going to we're not even becoming aware enough of our own ways of being that need healing. You know, it have you ever had those days where you just like, I'm not getting the fuck out of bed? All the time. I'm not. All the time. All the time. You had those days because you dealing, honestly, you dealing with brain fog. It's the depression. Well, at least for me. I can't speak for you, so I shouldn't do that. I'm no, sorry. no, but for no. Me, you're right. You're right. I do have brain fog, man, and I got to sift through that shit. I got to, like, see through the fog and, it, and kind of, like, pull myself out from the other side in order to get anything done in, in order to even lot. do something like this it's a lot it's a Jeez. lot it's, it's getting it's getting tougher and tougher by the day like i can see how people are you know openly like you know what i don't want to have kids or you know i don't want to do this i want to do things more for myself because you know you got so much to deal with and packed in from every direction from regular people in society from like i said from your family from all these types of people from your friends that eventually once you're tired of it it's gonna push you into that corner of not giving a fuck Mm -hmm. when your back is towards that wall eventually any animal that has the will to fight is gonna fight back and that's how you really fight back you gotta just you know be a mirror to the bullshit or you know be a shield to the bullshit honestly you know it's you you've got more internally with yourself that you want to grow and deal with than that you know you you got so much that you want to do yeah you don't have no fucking time yeah to let the outside elements create any distractions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like you can deal with some of these distractions, cool. Yeah. You know, you can you know, you can date, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm trying not, to sound like a dad. No, 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 you good. Okay, but dad. like but no, <laughs> no, you good. Some sometimes dating is a distraction for people. It is, it is. And that's what I realized. I realized that recently that I should not be dating. And and to to get to that conclusion that a lot of people don't get to, you gotta not give a fuck. Yeah. You gotta right. learn how to love you enough to not give a fuck yeah. and be comfortable with just being like, hey, I'm here in this space and I exist. Yeah, it was very draining dating and trying to focus on my path. Yeah. It's almost as if no, like the it's it's almost as if they're parallel and never intersect yeah why do i keep trying to intersect the two like it's just not gonna happen i think we it's a whole different path it's not mine it's not what i'm gonna cross it's not something i should be doing yeah and like you were saying earlier like knowing yourself yeah knowing myself you know, yeah. Try, trying to get to know yourself yeah. i realize there's a lot of people out there that that are so miserable that they don't even try to be honest with themselves about what it is that they really want and need it's difficult it's difficult to look, really look at yourself because remember earlier when i was saying how i know all of myself because i've looked and i've been real yeah right that's heavy to carry it, it really opens up a door that so one you got to work to open the door and then you have to work to close it when you need it closed yeah and that's a lot Right, and a lot of people don't want to open the door in the first place because it's going to be a lot of work to close that if I will ever be able to. It hurts. It's very painful. 
it's a lot. It's it's heavy. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna deal with that if I don't have to. That's pe- most people's mentality. Right. The only reason why I had to kind of I didn't have I didn't have a choice is because I had no choice. I wanted to be I wanted to get to a certain destination. There was no other way besides this way, and I had to process. I had to go through what I had to I had to go through myself. I had to learn. I had to see what the fuck was going on. I wanted to be a different person. Okay, how am I gonna do that? I have to learn the person I am now so I can adjust and move differently, yeah. right? And so, yeah. So that was the situation that like forced you, that you feel like forced you to be honest with yourself. Yeah, like I, I don't even remember. I wanna say it was drugs. I did a lot of pills and cough syrup, right? But I wanna say it was that, but like, Something in me was like, mm, something's something's not okay. Yeah. Um, let's wake you up now. Yeah. And I was like, okay, how do I do that? Okay, um, be honest. Be yeah. completely honest and transparent and vulnerable. It got to a point where I, I don't suppress any of my emotions, but that ends up becoming a problem. Yes. Right. Yes. So I got to a point where I was too expressive, I was too vulnerable, I was too sensitive. I was because I had a point where before I decided to open up that door, I didn't give a fuck. Like I gave a fuck, but I didn't give a fuck about nobody else. And I didn't give a fuck in the sense like it was it was like a tunnel vision type giving of a fuck, like caring or not caring, yeah. if if that makes any sense. Like I don't see nothing but me surviving right from, from moment to moment. Right? And whether that and mostly it was social. Right. Yeah. Social surviving. So surviving. Right. Surviving. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I know what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I look when I tell you, I didn't genuinely cry about my friend's death until months after when I started feeling more. I cried before because it was sad and I knew that's what I was supposed to do. And I felt it. I was shaking and I felt it. But as far as like expressing that emotion, it was something I was numb to for a while. And I would watch movies, I wouldn't cry, I'd be like, why the fuck are y'all crying right now? I mean, that's kind of funny. Like, you know, like I, my grandma died and then the tears weren't genuine they were what I felt like I was supposed to be what I was supposed to be doing a lot of my emotion a lot of the ways I spoke a lot of the ways I carried myself was what I felt like I was supposed to be doing like getting pissed off trying to fall out over that shit like I was like I really need to like get my shit together (laughs) man when I when I started thinking about it that way I started not giving a fuck so yeah, thinking from the third person perspective, I feel I find it interesting because I was thinking about this the other day about how I'm probably so hard on myself because I know me. You know- I know the full me from when I from when I became conscious mm-hmm. until now. I know everything about myself and something that I haven't figured myself for. Something you know, I just see myself fully and. Because I haven't, loved, I don't love myself. I haven't really promised that, forgiven myself. I'm not in a state of loving myself. I view that shit as if I'm not human or a regular ass person, and I'm just this asshole turd that doesn't deserve no. to be viewed uh, as. I've definitely been in that. Position. Right. So, but other people don't feel that way. People see me from the outside. They don't know every everything. They don't know who I am. They don't know everything about me. They don't know all the weird shit I've done in my past. All the fucked up things I've done that is affecting how I. Um, judge my like that is affecting how I gauge my ability to judge the situation properly mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and that's what keeps me in all these fucked up situations because I don't trust that oh this is not somewhere I need to be well maybe you're being dramatic yeah that's how I that was a lot was no because <laughs> like you get to a point of knowing like how to pick and choose your battles, right? Yeah. Like, I've gotten to a point where, like, 
I've realized that like I don't know everything about you, but I do know that like one thing that we share a trait that a lot of veterans share is that we beat up on ourselves a lot. Like a lot. Yeah, you know, I beat up myself. We're conditioned yeah. To. Yeah, I beat up on myself a lot. That's true. We are conditioned to. That is so true. That is something that we will carry forever. And that's something that we got to like consistently be aware of. I think that. That is so true. I think that the key to not giving a fuck for me, honestly and simply, is being more aware. You know, in the training, the whole point is to dismantle you or destroy you. It's brainwashing. To build you back up into what they want you to be. Mm -hmm. And I get it from a systemic standpoint because in order for the system to work, we cannot be individuals. The system of the military, right? Right. So I get it, but that is so true. Mm -hmm. Because they build you back up into this identity that That kind of leans that is based on that is that is based on an institution, but then you're supposed to transition back into the civilian world as an individual. They've kind of like normalized turning people into machines, and then when the machines don't know how to like transition back into the normal world, they vilify them. I mean, I've I've been through that several times too. Um, it's tough. It's really tough because you think that it puts you in a mind state that a lot of people in this world are against you. Yeah. Right? And again, awareness will teach you that it don't matter how many people are against you, you really don't need to give a fuck. You really don't need to give a fuck. That's it. That's the title of the episode, y'all. Fuck them. I don't give a fuck. That's real, though. I like your socks. Thank you. Look at these shoes, I had to mismatch. Y'all see these shoes, man? I'm so jealous, man. Oh, I'm ashy. My bad. You know, two different pairs of socks. I just saw that one over there. I said two different pairs of socks. Yeah, mismatch socks. It's cool. I get it. I understand. But I, uh, I was trying to rush here, like I was flying, so yeah, <laughs> you don't rush I was trying either. not to be late. It still worked though. They both were, they matched technically yeah. in one way. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I think that when you take on the "I don't give a fuck" mentality, uh, things get easier. Like, you know, it's a lot of people out here who's gonna judge you. And like put their expectations on you and shit and they live in the most fucked up life ever i had this dude that i was actually yeah they be unhappy as fuck they really do I mean, people a lot of people be miserable and like nothing makes them feel better except like spreading their misery to you yeah gotta be aware I'm definitely gonna get shit to do with them, but I'm grumpy as hell. And what's the key to that? Awareness. <laughs> you right. Cause you don't, cause you don't intentionally do it, and we all do that. Our moms do that to us. Our dads do that to us. You got, you know, if you got a big family, that's definitely worse, cause you got expectations from brothers, sisters. You know, everybody, nephews, that's a done. Huh? Aside from everybody. That's yeah, a lot of like whole family just putting their expectations on you. And then you realize, well, what the fuck are you doing with your life? How you got all these expectations for me? What, where, where are you going? Exactly. That's you know? the thing. I, one thing I, I have to tell, I tell myself that helps me not give a fuck is who are they and why should I care so much about their opinion of me? Like, who, who are you? Why should I care what you think? And, uh, you and shouldn't. The there's no answer to that. There's no real answer to that. You can say you're President Obama. I'm still going to be like, okay, well, uh, and? At the end of the day, you live one life. You got to do what's best for you. you know? Is that how you're going to be sitting? Me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm probably going to alternate between this position and this. 
Am I good? Okay. Both of those? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Okay. I'm cool. gonna go back to this one. <laughs> You need to do anything else right now? Um, no, nah, this front camera been running, rolling. Okay, that's good. We got all of that. I'm great. I'm okay. Good. Most of that. Most of that. It's not. I caught what I caught. Okay. No, <laughs> no pressure. Problem. No problem. Yeah, no problem. All right, you want to check out the cameras? <laughs> She's like, I already knew what to do. Yes. You look amazing. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, this is cool too. I like that we can get his shoes because I'm always I'm gonna shout them out again. I'm pretty sure I caught that though. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one's up your turn Yeah. You might just have to click a button. I've been doing nothing but watching. There's no card in this camera. Oh, yeah, no. Just, um, oh, the, the thing here. You moving wireless, though? Yeah. Okay. Nice and warm. I've been watching videos on lighting. <laughs> 